I have got here a little setup of a little pendulum. I've got a 500 gram mass. I've got a Pocket Lab one to do some recording. And I've tried to put this on a long retort stand, but I couldn't get one really long enough. So I've actually cheated and I've set this up on a, a lighting stand, which I've put right up to the ceiling and wedged against the ceiling to try and hold it tight. Now, if I give this pendulum a swing, we've got simple harmonic motion moving. The pendulum, when it starts, has over here gravitational potential energy. When I release it, it gets faster and faster and then slows down. Gets faster and faster to the midpoint, and then it slows down until it reaches a halt. Again, maximum gravitational potential energy. And then we go through the cycle again. Going from my hand out and back to my hand is one cycle or one oscillation. And we call that the period. What's noticeable about the pendulum is that it always takes the same amount of time to get from here back to here. And it doesn't matter if it's a big swing and we could time 10 of these. So it goes one and two and or whether I have it with a small oscillation and I go from this point one and two and very approximate but in fact if we time this very accurately we find that it does keep perfect time and for this reason these pendulums have been used to control clocks for the last seven eight hundred years so the pendulum is looking at energy changes. Now, at this point here, I can easily measure how far up this is from the ground, but measuring where it is in an oscillation can be more difficult. And trying to imagine how you might do this is quite interesting. A high-speed camera can help, or there is a really, really simple method, which is simply to stop the pendulum, and I can actually look at it, and I can record exactly its height. So I can work out the change of height in the pendulum. This is how much gravitational potential energy it's got. We can measure the speed, although it's changing speed all the time. So we could measure its acceleration and deceleration, and we can use something like this little device, the Pocket Lab one here, to record that. And we can also measure other parameters on here, such as the mass. Does it make any difference to this pendulum with a mass here of 500 grams? Or if I take some of the masses off, will it work just as well with 100 grams? And will it perform in exactly the same way. I could try and measure its period here, very approximately. One and two and, and it appears to be exactly the same. And we find that the weight is not necessarily anything to do with the period. So we can change the mass quite happily and the period doesn't change. I can take this up to now one kilogram. 
by putting another five 100 gram weights on here. And the major difference I note with this is, although the period is the same, one and two and, there's a lot more force required to stop it. And if it's a large mass, this will then take a lot longer to slow down than if it's got a small mass. So the pendulum is a very interesting machine for keeping accurate timekeeping and for studying in physics. And we'll meet this over and over again.